This is a Saddleback Church podcast. Today's episode is on a topic that may sound trivial or may even be something you want to actively avoid. But honestly, it's a conversation that I cannot recommend highly enough. Now, we may think of patience as waiting in line or putting on a nice face rather than lashing out in anger or frustration. But there is a depth and nuance to talking about patience that is so often untapped and underdeveloped. Patience can and should be a marker of our attachment to God. And as you'll hear about in this episode, patience can even be a diagnostic tool of sort to help you figure out what areas of your life you may be struggling in right now. My guest today is Megan Greider, the Celebrate Recovery Pastor at Saddleback Lake Forest. Now, this is Megan's third or fourth time on this podcast, and today we will talk about her own battles with patience, the struggles of patience as it relates to anxiety and depression, and the beautiful opportunity we have to trust God when we ask for help with patience and much, much more. My name is Jason Wheeland, and this is Doable Discipleship, a Saddleback Church podcast designed to help you deepen your friendship with God, part of the Saddleback family of podcasts. Now, my conversation with Megan Greider. Megan, thanks for being with us today. Back by popular demand. I don't know if if you knew this. I don't know if we had talked about it. People in the comments on the last episode that you did on boundaries were like, hey, we need more of her. Oh my goodness. I did not know that. I'm serious. Is that real? Uh, It's 100% real. They said more episodes with Megan, please. Wow. Well, I'm so happy to be here. I love being on this with you. I feel like it just... You are so insightful. You really steward this space so well. You you are so kind. And I feel like we can have you on to talk about literally anything, (laughs) which is helpful because today we're talking about everyone's favorite topic. Yes. Patience. Um, So before we get into, you know, like the actual talking about emotional health with patients and all that stuff. Yes. I'm just, I, 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 I already told you I wanted to ask you what, I want to hear your definition. How would you define patience? Yes. And it's interesting because in different seasons of life, I would have defined it different. I kind of had a feeling yes. that you would come with a nuanced and, look. So and that's I why. think that we look at, we look at patience as um, behavior or something that's really at the top, like this emotion that's at the top. And yeah. so by nature, I have always been an impatient person. Mm. And most people would not know that because I actually, you know, I trained as an actress, as you and I, we talk about yes. this often. <laughs> we love the theater, you and I. Yes. But uh, so I could act like I was a patient person, but I did not have that embedded patience that comes from being um, an emotionally healthy person. And so for me, patience, I would have, I would have defined it, a, you know, a few decades ago as, you know, being able to hold it together or in our family, we say, tuck it in, tuck it in, tuck it in. So we're not <laughs> um, outwardly angry or even being mindful of being passive aggressive. Mm. So if I'm patient, then I am nice. And you know, my relationship with the word nice. Yes, I do. Uh, there's a difference between kind and nice. Yeah. And so I think that um, for me, I look at patience as as this expression of not just kindness, but an understanding that things aren't going the way that I want them to go. Mm. And I have opinions and judgments and criticisms about that. And how am I working through that? How am I, how am I not tucking myself in, but at looking at myself and saying, how can I respond in a way that isn't just nice, but that is beneficial? or Mm. the experience. So I look at patience as this thread that's woven in kind of to our, to our tapestry of faith. It's a much deeper issue than many of us. Well, than I used to think of, I thought it was like, Oh, it's just, you're a patient person or you're not patient person. Yeah. It's not just your ability to wait in line. Yes. There's something deeper, something a lot more personal that is going on underneath. Yes. And I think, I think there's even another word 
four patients that we'll get to at another time, okay. a, a little bit okay. later in the conversation, because right. I think that fits yes. in here. Um, now, okay, that's a great I, a great way to start because I don't want people to think, oh, we're just talking about, you know, just the, the art of waiting. Right. Like, right. Is, is that really what we're talking about in this conversation, and especially as it relates to emotional health, mm-hmm. is that it's something much more ingrained. It's something much deeper. It's something that's much and sometimes much more difficult to really process yes. and really come to terms with and and think through and be intentional about. Right. Now, I know, I, I I believe that most people would believe that patience is a good thing to yes. have. But usually we view it as that we want other people to be patient yes. with us yes. or with situations. We don't yeah. like when people are, other people are impatient. Right. But oftentimes we ourselves, uh, don't want to have to wait. We don't want to have to be patient. We want things to happen our way in the time and space that we want them to happen. So what is it about us, about people that makes patience so difficult or even like stressful? Well, I think so at its core, there's two different kinds of patients. And even biblically, there's, there's patience and circumstances. And then there's patience with people. Those are very, those are two different concepts and two different Greek words in the New Testament. Perfect. Break it down. So, and I won't say the Greek words because as we both know, I am not a scholar. (laughs) Well, after you go to Greece this summer, you can come back and share your Greek. Oh my goodness. That would be so fun. Um, Yes. So the, the Greek word for like patience and circumstances Mm -hmm. That actually is broken down into like the the centering for that kind of patience. The the overflow of that kind of patience comes from hope. So I can be patient in circumstances when I have ultimate hope, not just for my life, but also for today. I have hope for today Mm -hmm. so that when things are not going according to plan and you and I, before we we started recording, we were talking about there's a lot in my life that is not going according to plan right now. Just a smidgen that that (laughs) I feel impatient in some spaces. I wish that that circumstances were moving forward faster or that they would be different or mm-hmm. that they would change. And ultimately my impatience in that, right? Like I want everyone to kind of do the things that I want them to do. And ultimately that struggle, and, and that goes back to your question, that struggle is because our, our, my biggest struggle with idolatry is that I believe I know better than God. Mm. And so when things are not happening according to my plan, I'm looking at it through this lens of a self-focus and a self-centeredness that is different than just being aware of self, right? So that is, that is entrenched in my sin nature that I, I want things to be comfortable. I want things to go the way that I want them to. And I can dress it up and look at pretty, make it look pretty, which I did for years and years and years yeah. as I would, I would act like, Oh, I'm impatient for this because I actually have a godly approach to this. And I, I want this person to be a better person or I want this circumstance so that God can be glorified. Right. So I, yeah. I'm framing this, I'm creating a narrative that makes me look really good and my desires God's will. And so we want our lives to be comfortable and good isn't comfortable always. And the best isn't always something that makes sense to us. Yeah. It seems like there's this pride factor that we come up against that, that, that idea that you talked about that, that we know better. We want things to happen our way. If they, if only things happen the way that I know that they should happen, then a, I wouldn't have to be, you know, in this place of frustration or struggle or suffering or wait or whatever, because things, if they happen my way, then none, then this would all be good for me. Yes. Right. And that's the hard part. It's usually what we come up against is it's the best thing for me. Yes. And not always the best thing for God and his perspective, his providence in that. And always, usually, and sometimes not even the best for other people. Right. Because we know what happens our way. As you said, we want to be comfort yes, or comforted or comfortable. And so acting in the way that we think is best is usually going in the lines of our best comfort, our our best best interest. Right. And even when, even if, um, you know, I've talked about this several times on this podcast, there are times where it's like, I, I really looked like I was doing all of these wonderful things for people and to care for people. And they were to care for the people, but really it was also to self-medicate. You're making Mm. me uncomfortable with your pain. So let's fix that. Let's take care of that. I'm impatient with your process. Mm. And, um, when we 
are looking at impatience when I look at impatience with people. So I'm more comfortable um, having that kind of um, patience in circumstances because my life really has not gone according to plan. That's a muscle that God absolutely has built up. Yeah. But my patience with people is still a real area of growth for me. Mm. And um, God is, is still doing that wonderful work in me that is painful and um, complicated. But the thing, the difference in the nuanced difference of patience with people. So biblically and in the New Testament, that word actually is grounded in mercy. Yeah. So, uh, so patience in circumstances, that's grounded in hope. That's the overflow of having hope in our life. But patience with people, that Greek word is grounded in the concept of mercy. First of all, God's mercy towards me and so the opposite of mercy, uh, the opposite of patience is actually judgment mm. and criticism. And I am a one on the Enneagram. I don't know if we have any people who love the Enneagram, <laughs> but you know, one of the things with an Enneagram one is that we um, have a real critical spirit, first of all, with ourselves. And secondly, it can be expressed very much with other people. And so that's why I think I struggle so much with patience with other people is that I have such a critical spirit mm -hmm. and to look at if they would just fill in the blank, everything would be easier. Everything would be better. And why can't they just fill in the blank, especially when someone's healing or process or life is not going as yeah. fast as I would like it to go mm. and they can't get it and they can't. So there's a lack of mercy in my heart towards another person when I have impatience. And it could be in the line when someone is just talking to the person who's checking them out. And I'm like, okay you're done checking out, like finish. You don't need to finish this conversation. So I have no, I have no, I have a judgment and criticism about that part because I've got places to go and the world revolves around me. So <laughs> I've got, I've, I have big, important things to do. And so I think, or in, in big things, right. Sure. Where I'm impatient with someone's growth process. Mm. And so I am not pouring out the mercy that really God has poured into my life. So these are character issues. These are, these are, Things that, that are expressed, we have patience expressed in a life that is abiding in Christ, in a life that is spirit filled. Yeah. And when and patience is always a really good indicator of me with my about my attachment to Jesus. Well, that's a I don't know if you knowingly did this, but that's a perfect segue to to where I, I wanted to take it next, was which is that I think when people think about patience in the Bible, most people would it go to, oh, that's one of the fruit of the spirit, mm -hmm. love, joy, peace, patience. Right. And so I, I would, I wanted to know what you would say of how should we think about patience in terms of the fruit of the spirit? And I think you were starting down that track a little bit in what you were just saying, Yes. but then also how should we frame even just the concept of the fruit of the spirit in our lives? Right. And, and the fruit of the spirit that those are, those are, um, those are qualities that are the overflow of having the spirit in us. So yeah. I always think about a tree and a tree bearing fruit. It's, it's not like, Oh, I'm bearing this fruit, right? It's, it's attached to the roots. It's just doing its thing because yeah. of the system. And I think about us and um, being attached to the vine of Jesus and the fact that really the fruit comes from abiding in him. The fruit is an overflow of being filled with the spirit. We find um, the fruit of the spirit in Galatians, right? And Galatians is all about freedom and it's all about being filled with the spirit and having a spirit led life versus not having a spirit led life and the qualities that you have when we're just left in our own nature. And so I think that where I can think of patience of like, I'm going to work on patience. I'm going to work on being a more patient person and I'm going to get strategies. Well, that's an expression of patience. That's not the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit comes from me, you know, and they're, they're all birthed out of love, which is the first yeah. for fruit of the spirit. So when I am spirit led, when I am taking the moment to say, okay, I'm so impatient right now, God, I need you to help me not, I better be patient. <laughs> um, Lord, direct me, Lord, change my heart, Lord, you know, pour, you've poured out your mercy to me, help me pour out to this other person. 
And those can happen in split seconds in our minds when we are abiding and attached to him. And so I do think of like, you know, I was a children's director for years, so I can sing the song about the fruit of the spirit. I know, you know, the oh, joy, yeah. peace, but, you know, all of those <laughs> things. But the patience part, the forbearance of that really stems in knowing who I am as a, as a child of God, as a daughter of the king and believing that in him and through him, I can do hard things not in my own strength, but in his strength. So if I am lacking patience, if I am lacking peace or joy or any of any of the fruit of the spirit, it's not, oh, I better get it together and I better do a Bible study on it. Yeah, I'm not saying that Bible studies aren't helpful. I've done a lot of them and I love them <laughs> and they help me, but it's about what am I doing with that information? How is it transforming me? And so the spirit led life, sometimes that can feel so esoteric to us, but really that's just about life. That's about life, living it attached to Jesus and depending on the the gift that he has given us and the Holy Spirit in us. Yeah, I did an episode on this podcast about, I don't know, a year or so ago, and it, it was about the fruit of the Spirit. And we were talking about it as um, how we can look at the fruit of the Spirit almost as this as this audit of like a way to look and see like, am I experience, am I feeling and seeing these things present in my life? And if not, that may be a sign that, Oh, I need to look at how I'm attached to the vine right now. Yes. And just that look of, it, as you were saying about the tree and it's the natural outward growth of attachment to the vine, Jesus. And if you are attached and you are living a life that is attached to Jesus, you will be seeing these fruit in your life. That is the natural fruit, just like yes. just like an apple tree. When yes. it's all working properly, the apples will grow. Right. It, you know, um, and patience is one of those ones that it's it's easy, or I should say, it can be easy to identify whether or not you are living this yes. out. Yes. A few of the other ones might be a little harder. You know. Right. Was I gentle enough yes. or am I loving enough in my spirit of joy? But patience, that's usually one that you can even ask other people. Am I, am I a patient person? Is that something that right. you would describe me as? Right. Um, you know, am I, am I expressing my long suffering for you? Right. You know, kind of thing. <laughs> right. Well, and that's, I mean, those first three fruit are attached to um, an expression of, you know, they're, they're attached to God. The yeah. other three patient starts how we're, how we are relationally mm -hmm. and, and what that overflow looks like. And I love the concept of overflow yeah. because I, I had lived and served so much from a place of emptiness trying to fill. Mm. And so I would try to fill with this kind of contrived patience as opposed to having the overflow of, of, working with God and abiding in him and loving him and just letting him do the thing, letting mm. him do the work in me. And there are people, I mean, we all have people that bring out specific points of impatience <laughs> in our lives and they're different for each of us. And I think a lot of times when I look at where I'm most impatient, it's almost always um, either a struggle I I had in a family of origin, uh, uh, my own character defects that have been revealed to me that I'm witnessing in someone else that is really unpleasant because it's a mirror, but I don't even know that that's what's happening. So a lot of times, that's one of the things that I love about recovery work or sanctification is that we can look and say, why am I consistently impatient in this circumstance or mm. with this type of person? Mm. Because it will reveal something about us and it will reveal also certain lies that we may have about God or certain certain misconceptions that we have about ourselves. And so they are, it, it, it's a litmus test, but it's, you know, the fruit of the spirit, but it's also so much more. My tension in my life, the, the feelings that I have that are unpleasant, they're always revealing something to me. Yeah. And I think what I love about framing patience as a fruit of the spirit is that it's not just like get it together and tuck it in. It's Lord, what are you revealing to me? And so, and then how can I bring that to you? And how can you refine me in that process? Well, I love that you can bring that into that relationship. And I wanted to go back because at the beginning we had talked about that there's patience in situations and circumstances, and then there's patience for people. Yeah. How does patience for yourself weigh in? Oh, that is such a great question. That's a great question. Um, 
Well, I have some thoughts about that, but it's a really good question. I want to know what would you think about that? Like, what's what's your thought process behind that? Well, I think like if we're talking about, it, it can almost even sometimes be harder to be patient with yourself. Mm-hmm. And, and again, I think that depends on your personality type. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for some people, they are naturally um, more able to say like, oh, like I know I'm not perfect. I'm working on it. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and yeah. can have patience. But for some people, it's a lot harder. Yeah. And especially for people who may struggle with anxiety or mm-hmm. depression when they are in a place where they find themselves um, making wrong choices mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. Um, getting stressed out about the idea of making wrong choices or being fearful of making the wrong choice. Right. Then it can start this snowball cycle of then losing patience for yourself and not giving yourself the grace needed to know that, hey, I'm going through this thing right now i'm in this space yeah and that can be difficult yeah um i just finished i I told you about this book i just finished this book i don't have it with me i was looking around for it do i have it with me (laughs) called on getting out of bed uh by alan noble who i'm hoping to have on this podcast soon um and and in it you know the idea is 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 he he talks a lot about people who struggle with anxiety depression issues Mm -hmm. um, because he himself has walked through that and um, he talks about sometimes the, you know, the best thing, sometimes the biggest step that you can take, the most worshipful thing that you can do is to just get out of bed. Yes. And so having that patience with yourself, if you yes. find yourself in that place where it's just a really hard day, yeah, to be able to accept it's a really hard day. Yes. And that's okay. That happens. Yeah. But having that patience with yourself in those moments can be extraordinarily difficult. Yes. Well, I think it's, I think it's also an indicator if, if we're looking at the genesis of patience is this is mercy. Yeah. And I think, um, and I struggle with all of those things, right? So I have an anxiety, depression disorder. I'm very open about it. It looks a little bit like manic depression and I have autoimmune diseases. And sometimes it's, I actually think the gift in those things, not to have like a toxically positive approach to it, but really the gift of those things has been, I am a highly capable woman who was cut out, Mm -hmm. cut down at the knee, but in the knees with just like, I physically couldn't do things. I um, mentally sometimes have a really significant fog where my mind does not work the way that I wish it, it would. Yeah. And what that revealed to me when I was first diagnosed um, 12 years ago with my autoimmune diseases is that I have so much, I will, I will pour out and share and believe in God's grace and mercy for you, but I will not do the same for myself. And so that impatience, and this is a daily struggle for me because I do want to hit a bar, right? I, I want to do it well and I want to do it right. And I want to do it perfectly if possible. And to look and see the ways that I fall short, which I have great patience and compassion for others. Mm. I feel like I have a different, um, I have a different measurement for myself. Yeah. And as I've, as I've kind of done the excavation of that in, in, in my heart and my soul and my mind, and God has walked with me about that, really what that has said is I still am trying to earn God's grace and mercy. Mm. Because if I, if I did this, then I'd be okay. So I still have a litmus of what makes me a child worthy of God's love. Yeah. And at the core of that is such a, such a, insidious lie that I can earn God's love. It's, it's a gift. And I think in having patience for myself and I literally, this is something, I mean, I have, I have those kind of like daily affirmations, especially when I'm having a really hard day and I physically can't function. I can't do the things that I need. And sometimes it's minute by minute. It's minute by minute. That's why I love the serenity prayer. Yeah. You know, but, but that patience of myself of, of like, okay, this is a day and this is my day. And I, this is what this day has to look like for me. And I, I need to work from bed today or I need to actually not work at all, which are very, it's, I get so impatient. I get impatient that I can't go up the (laughs) stairs. I get impatient that I can't hold a glass without dropping it. Okay. I need to give you this book because this is literally, he talks about this thing. I know. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. (laughs) But, but I do think that patience with self, you know, sometimes we feel like we're letting ourselves off the hook or, you know, we should be moving forward and it's a journey towards God. And, and those things can be true at the same time. God can be moving me forward and refining me. And I'm, I'm continuing that, 
you know, we, we say sanctification in the fancy Christian circles and really it's recovery and restoration. Yeah. And, you know, that's what it looks like. And I can have this patience that comes from God's mercy. God has poured out his mercy. I can, I can abide in it. Mm. I can abide in it. And I think that you've hit on something that is a core struggle. We always think of this patience as this, this outward expression of an, but it's an inward reality that we're expressing. Yeah. Can, uh, one more thing on a similar note. Yes. You've talked before, even on this podcast, um, about a, a codependency. Yes. How does codependency and patience play together? Well, so codependency being an addiction to people and what they think of you yeah. or trying to manage your emotions by um, fixing other people. Yeah. Um, the impatience usually, I mean, I'll tell you what, <laughs> what, what sealed it for me that I struggled with codependency mm, was my impatience oh, with okay. others, That's my resentment, my bitterness, mm. my, my deep critical spirit of if they would just do this, then they would be okay. Yeah. And not understanding. And that's when you went, oh. And that's when I went, oh, hey, guess what? <laughs> Maybe I am the problem. <laughs> Maybe I have a challenge because I wasn't pointing people to Jesus. I was trying to be their savior and trying to fix the situation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Isaiah tells us that his ways are not our ways and my mm -hmm. thoughts are not his thoughts. And so the way that I think things should go, especially with a codependent struggle, um, I will have impatience with someone's process. Yeah. I will have impatience with someone's process. And and there's a difference between impatience and then also needing distance, right? Mm. So impatience is this person just they need to get it together. There's there's times where someone doesn't need patience, they need distance. We talked about this yeah, in boundaries. boundaries episode, yeah. So it's not uh, you know someone who is being <clears throat> verbally abusive or really unhealthy or toxic in a relationship. They they need your patience. From afar, you can be patient with them, but you're not usually in relationship with them. We can have mercy with health. And so I, I just want to make that really, yeah. really, really clear. clear. Yeah. As always, I know we it's always, always smile important. about it, but we, you just never know if anyone's heard us talk about it before. Exactly. But codependency, that's, that's usually when I am finding myself impatient with um, people, places or things. I am usually looking at so myself. Now. Yes, I am usually thinking, okay, there's something in me where I am, I have taken back the reins from God. Mm, that, that's a really, that's a really important way to put it. And I think it's really helpful for people because I, I think that codependency, it, it has this almost um, idea in society, but I don't think, I don't think many people kind of can put it into such terms that you do, which is so helpful. So, oh. so thank you for doing that. Well, isn't it good that all of my, <laughs> all of my shortcomings in pain are serving a purpose. <laughs> hey, you serve so many people in being able to, in, in able and willing to talk openly about that. And that's so, I, I'm sure for many people listening, they're just so grateful mm -hmm. for, you know, for that willingness and openness and having worked through the process as much as you have. And I know that you would say the process is never done. Yes. That you're still, that's still something is working through, Yes, but it being, you know, it, it allows people to feel like they can be on that journey with you, which I think mm. is very helpful. Um, I wanted to shift gears a little bit back sure. to just uh, the a primary look at patience. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I think most people would agree. I'm sure it's not just true for me, but I'm sure a lot of people would feel that anytime I decide I need to be patient or I'm going to be more patient today or you hear a message on patience on the weekend or yes. whatever, there's this phenomenon in the world, and I want to address it because I'm sure many people have been thinking about it in this episode, where it seems like I am immediately put into situations where my patience is strongly tested. Yes. And it, I don't, it doesn't seem like that with, a, with many other times. It seems like patience is the primary one. It, and there's the joke in Christian circles, like you never pray for patience right. because then you're just going to be right. like hit over the head with it. Um, so... Have you, I'm sure, I, I think you've seen this to be true. Yeah, I'm guessing. Well, absolutely. I, I, I remember <laughs> my like third Bible study circle ever in my life. So I came yeah. to Christ as an adult and I had a lot of questions. And so mm. my Bible study leader would sometimes like, ugh, me in tear kind of a deal. <laughs> but I remember. As you walk in the door, they're, as, like, mm. they're like, oh, so many questions. She's going to have so many questions. <laughs> but I was, I was sitting and I was in my early twenties and I was having, uh, I was talking, I was answering a question and I said, I think I just need, I think I just need more patience. And I got to pray for patience. Mm. And 
I am not kidding you. Like 12 women are like, don't pray for patience. Don't pray. And I was like, and I just was like, oh my gosh, I don't, I don't speak Christianese. I don't know what you guys are talking about. (laughs) And so, and that was really a huge part of, of kind of our faith vocabulary as I was growing up in faith in this church of a lot of brand new believers is, is don't, don't pray for patience. Don't talk about patience because you're going to need it. And I, I agree that phenomenon. I think that, I think that there is truth to that. It's I like have, it's God's laughing card. I, it's just yeah. But, joke. but I also, I also think that, you know, if you think about the fact that patience is an expression of mercy yeah, and the fact that we do have an enemy of our soul who is so diametrically opposed to any sort of mercy and grace that of course the moment we try to entrench ourselves in something that is so close to God and such an expression of of who God is that's yeah. what mercy that of course we're going to have more things that would be and again like I'm not a person that's like oh the devil's everywhere okay. but yeah. there is an enemy of our soul sure and and there's our sin nature so you got two things working against you when you're when you're trying to move forward in this beautiful expression of an attribute of god which is patience and Mm -hmm. and mercy expressed through patience yeah you know it's gonna and frankly the world is really hard and there's a lot to be impatient for (laughs) yeah it's not like you need to pray for it in order to see it it'll it'll (laughs) it'll happen regardless but i do think there that if we turned it on its head a little bit yeah if we weren't so afraid yeah. of our own discomfort, yes, then praying for patience or praying for joy, praying for you know, praying for any of the fruit of the right. spirit or any of these attributes that are close to God's heart that He calls us to grow into, in, 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 as we grow towards Christ likeness, right? It's an opportunity. What we're asking for is that opportunity to be grown and shaped by God. Yes, but what we don't want is the fear or the pain or the struggle that has to come with that. Because yes. just as your body grows as you're a kid and you're growing, you go, go through growth spurts and there yes. can be aches and pains associated yes. with that. The same is true for our Christian life. Right. And so really if we, it's almost like, yes, go ahead and pray for patience, knowing that you may be put into a situation where yeah. you're going to need it soon. But, in, but as you are praying for patience, also, Thank God for being with you in whatever yes. that's going to lead to. Yes. You know, whatever that it's, and it may be scary. It may be intimidating. It may be that it may be um, that you aren't called to do it by yourself, but yeah. you bring somebody else into whatever situation comes right. up. Right. But I would say like, don't fear. Right. Being in God's hands. That. That is everything. I mean, that statement is everything. And that's that's how I look at patience. You know, when I pray for patience, because I do, there are circumstances, there are people, there's, there's life is hard, God is good. That's our Grider family mm, motto. I like it. Um, and all of this is when I'm praying for patience, I will, I've never seen God show up for me more. I'm mm. going to be honest than when I'm praying through a very difficult situation where I don't have mercy, where I have a critical spirit, where I'm very impatient with a, with a person because relationship is, is where we get to see our expression. Yeah. And so what I learned from those things is I'll say, Lord, you know, please just a tender mercy today. Show me mm. because I know, I know I can name back from 1993 where God has given me patience in a relationship. And I know it was completely tied to me seeking it in him and through him that I couldn't do it in my own strength. I mean, I have a relationship to this day where we began with such disdain, borderline hatred for each other. My very first Bible study I ever led as a Bible study Uh leader. And she was in there and I was like, she walked in and I was like, this is never going to work. And I (laughs) called the head of, I was like, you can't put so-and-so in my, you know, I mean, it was, it was the worst. And I remember, um, my, my Bible study leader at the time, her name was Sandy. And she said, why don't you pray for God to change your mind? Why don't you pray for God to change your heart? Yeah. And I remember thinking, whatever, like that's not going to fix it. And in my 
not having how about any I pray background. For God to change yeah, her yeah, how about attitude. how about I pray for God to <laughs> get her out of my Bible study? Because then it would be amazing. <laughs> we'll experience his presence in a totally different way. <laughs> but I do remember because I just didn't know anything, but I, yeah. I believed her and I and I started praying that and I write out all my prayers, which is very helpful because you can see him answer that. Sure. And I just remember, I think it was really quickly, like two weeks in, and we became such not just like we put up with each other, like God knit our hearts together. And um, I, I I remember that when I'm struggling interpersonally with someone, when I have impatience for someone. I think, you know, God created the heavens and the earth by his outstretched arm and mighty power. He There's, there's nothing he can't do. So I'm impatient. He's got me. Yeah. But seeking him in that and actually asking for eyes to see instead of just trying to like white knuckle it and be a patient person that has been transformational for me. And like I said, it doesn't, God hasn't just changed my life. He changes my day mm. and he changes my moments. Mm. And, and that's how patient that, that mercy expressed through patience can change us from the inside out because we get to see him in such a unique and, and tender way. And on, yeah. And, and on top of that, pr- like that acknowledgement, that reminder that on the other side of your impatience and that strive to be patient or that struggle to be patient yeah. is a person. Yes. Right? A person who is as equally loved by God as you. Yes. A person who is made in God's image like yes. you. Yes. A person who has all of their own backstory, their family history, right. everything that walking has, through their own hard thing. Walking through their walking own hard thing. Walking through things. their own hard thing and thinking I get to I can be the hands and feet of Jesus right now by giving yeah. patience or I can not. Yeah. And and that's really what it comes down to. But again, in our own strength we will never get there and I think that's that was the biggest learning lesson for me is to know that this patience is an an overflow of mercy and it's an overflow of hope. Mm. I I have faith and hope so I can be patient in circumstances. God has been merciful to me, therefore I can have patience with people. Mm. So for anybody who wants to step into these uh, rocky waters yes. of patience. Yes. What are some uh, ways that people can can either adopt a, the, this greater posture of patience mm-hmm. or what sort of like encouragement or advice would you give for people who maybe they are doing kind of what we talked about in that they are like, you know, this... I can, I can see that I'm not as patient a person as I probably should be yeah. or I want to be. And they want to grow in that. Mm-hmm. What can we tell them? I think um, the first would, just that admission, can we just talk about that? Because that's, that's a big deal, right? Yeah. For someone to say, hey, this is an area where I want to grow. And we always say in recovery, you know, we tell it to ourselves, to God, and to someone we trust. And so you had talked about how, inviting someone into the process. And so, um, you know, one of my character defects happens to be impatience. And so that is something that I will. I seem to, to. always ask you to do episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Not knowing how close they are <laughs> to close your prayer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I laughed when you, and I was like, sure, I'll do an episode yeah. on patience yeah. um, <laughs> or impatience, depending on That's how so you want to look at yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So um, I think that, that the struggle for me, as I said earlier, was like figuring out why certain things make me impatient. Mm. Because things that make me impatient, sometimes my my um, kids or my husband or people, they're like, why, why, is this, why is this irking you right now? Because it doesn't seem, and then there are people that my husband might get impatient about something where I'm just like, I don't understand that because they're all coming from different places. And so knowing, I think patience is, is a, impatience is kind of a revelation. It's a way of God saying, Hey, here's a pocket that's kind of dark for you. It's almost like an MRI. Yes. Like it allows you to get a full scan and be like, okay, what's going on? That is such a great illustration. That's yeah. It's, it, it tells us where we are. So Mm. paying attention to the tension of our impatience inviting God into that. Some of that is, you know, some reflection, some journaling, you know, I'm a big fan of journaling because the what is impatience, but the why is not impatience. The why is something is something deeper. And so kind of figuring out if I, if I'm always impatient waiting in line, like I'm mad waiting in line or on hold or whatever that is making me what's behind that. 
and in that, what, what, what can I do? I'm a big fan of, of finding, um, God's word in context that will help me with certain areas that I struggle with. Yeah. And so I, I, I will pray back God's word. Um, and again, I don't do that cause I'm a really spiritual person. I do that cause I struggle so deeply that that is like life and death for me. Mm. Megan, thanks for being here as always. Always appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. I just think you're the best. Thank oh, you're, you. You're so sweet. <laughs> Friends, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Megan. Let's look at some doables out of this episode. First, start by ad- admitting that patience might be an issue for you. If you've seen this as a struggle of yours, Talk with God about it and talk with another trusted person. Get it out in the open with some people and encourage that trusted person to talk with you about it and allow them to enter into that with you. Second, do a personal audit of why certain things make you feel impatient. Get a journal or something to write in and try processing about why certain things trigger impatience in you. Again, that can be used as that diagnostic tool that we talked about, that MRI machine to help you to see certain areas that you may be experiencing pain in. Third, try praying for patience. Now, I know that sounds scary or even intimidating, but offer that up to God, knowing that he may very well put you in a situation where your patience is tested. But trust him in it. Don't hide from it. Allow him to grow you however he sees fit in that time. Friends, this has been another episode of Doable Discipleship. We will see you again next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this episode, consider giving us a rating or review on iTunes. If you do, you'll help other people find us in the future. You can also listen to these episodes on YouTube. Just subscribe to the Saddleback Church YouTube channel for these conversations, plus lots of other video content. And if you are already listening to us on YouTube, subscribe to the Doable Discipleship Podcast on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcasting app so you can listen in the car or wherever else you go. Don't forget to visit saddleback.com slash doable to check out all of our previous episodes and go to saddleback.com slash grow to find spiritual growth resources and view a calendar of upcoming events. Lastly, you can always get in touch with us by emailing maturity at saddleback.com. Send us your thoughts, send us your questions, your Bible questions, your life questions, whatever. Who knows? Your question might just inspire an upcoming episode. Thanks again for tuning in to Doable Discipleship. I'm Jason Whelan, and I hope you'll join us again next week.